to get started, um, I'm here actually with Jonathan Marsh with WSO2, and he's uh, Director of Architecture for WSO2. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about WSO2? Well, WSO2 is an open source company, and uh, we build a complete SOA platform on top of the Apache Web Services projects. Great. So what we're going to show is an end-to-end -end service oriented app built with .NET 3.5 and Windows Communication Foundation, okay? And to get started, I'm gonna show you kind of an all .NET implementation just to give you a sense of the application. It's a stock trading scenario and the app's called .NET Stock Trader. Interestingly, if, you're, if you like this app, it's all downloadable off of MSDN as sample code and template code so you can take it, your developers can work with it, et cetera. Uh, this is a, a Windows Presentation Foundation front end to the application. Um, so I'm going to just log in as myself here. And we're going to see that I get a market summary, what's going on in the market. I can look at my account information, go over here to the portfolio page. We can get a little uh, 3D modeling going on from the smart client. But here's the, the really key point. All of the data, everything you see here, is actually not being serviced within the, within the presentation client. It's actually flowing from a service, a back-end remote service that we'll call the business service layer. And that's a WCF service built with advanced web service standards, namely the WS star standards that include reliable messaging, transactions, and full message level security using certificates to encrypt the whole payload. So it's very secure. In fact, let's continue on here. Let's go ahead and buy a stock. I think I'm going to buy uh, S2 here, and I'll buy 333 shares, just so you can see this order from the others I've got in my portfolio. So we'll place that order, and what's happening here is a service-to-service -service interaction. So we've gone from the, uh, the client to the middle-tier business service, and yet that's going to invoke another service, which is the order processing service, also over advanced message security and web services. And we can see we got the order alert that the order processing service has indeed placed that order, and we'll see that in our, in our portfolio. So let's uh, bring up a quick slide to just recap what we've seen so far. Um, we've seen kind of the all.net implementation of this composite SOA application, the, the Windows presentation client, the middle tier business services, talking to the order processor. But what we're going to see next is a couple of things. We can swap in at any layer of this application an alternate non-Microsoft platform technology because we adopt the same web service advanced standards. Uh, the first thing we're going to see is PHP seamlessly connecting as an alternate front end to the business services done in .NET. The second thing we're going to see is we're going to swap out that order processor component from the .NET implementation to a Java-based implementation running in the WSO2 Java application server. So with that, I think I'm going to turn it over to Jonathan to, to show you some of this stuff. Thank you. So I'm going to show first uh, connecting to the .NET business service using the PHP application. So let me just bring that up. I can log in. Uh, it's a very similar kind of functionality to what Gregory has in his smart client. In fact, I'll log in as Greg so I can see the transaction that he just uh, performed. I can go to my portfolio, or to Greg's portfolio here, <laughs> and see that, yes, the 333 shares are there. In fact, I can place an order here. I can sell. I'm going to sell the 333 shares Thank that you, you just, <laughs> just bought. Did they make any money? And uh, we can see in the portfolio that those shares are, are now gone. So what we've really shown here is uh, a, a, a PHP application. It's developed on the WSO2 web services framework for PHP, which is based on the Apache Axis 2 project. Uh, the C implementation, so it's unmanaged code, talking to the .NET managed code uh, business service layer. And then what else I'd like to show is talking from that .NET business service layer to another managed stack, which is a Java implementation. And we've written a, a Java uh, order processing backend service uh, that's hosted in the WSO2 web services application server, which again is based on the Apache Access 2 project, but this time the Java implementation. And so Greg, can you configure your, uh, your .NET middle tier to talk to my Java backend? Yep, let me do just that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a quick reconfiguration so the business service, that middle tier service, is now going to talk to an alternate order processor to place and process these orders. So I'm going to bring up the uh, configuration page here for the business service layer. And right now, uh, it's just connected to the .NET order processor. I'm going to change the order mode. There's some preset modes here we've built into the sample. And I'm going to change this from talking to the .NET order processor to actually talking to the WSO2 Java order processor. So I'll update the configuration. Now, of course, 
what I next need to do is tell the business service where to find the Java order processor. So I need to give it uh, a description or a location for that order processor. And I can do that here in the Connections tab. And I'm just going to add a new connection here over to the uh, WSO2 application server. And that's on my local server, so I just have to type that in. Whoops, little keyboard issue there, all right. <laughs> There we go, localhost ought to work. Okay, add the connection. And now what we're going to see in the connections tab is that we're connected not only at the top level to the .NET order processor, but the active one is now the WSO2 Java application server. And in fact, that uh, has a console here that's going to display the decrypted contents of the order message. Because remember, we're going over full message security with full digital certificate encryption of the message payload. So I think we're all configured. And I'll just turn it back over to Jonathan to go ahead and place an order here. OK. Let's bring back up the PHP. And uh, I love you can go to our quotes. Here we go. I'm going to buy shares of this one. Let's buy 111 shares. Now, what happened here is the, the uh, PHP front end talked with the .NET business process layer. It went back here to the Java order processing layer and came, uh, the confirmation is coming back up uh, into the, uh, actually into the smart client. We can see here that we have, the smart client has received the order confirmation because it's still logged into that. Business. We're logged in as the same user in the same session, so it flowed all the way back up. So we went PHP, .NET, Java, and then flowed all the way back up for the order alert to the uh, WPF smart client front end. So this is really uh, quite impressive. What we're really showing here is Microsoft and open source solutions working together to solve the needs of today's diverse enterprises. And we're going from .NET uh, through advanced message security and advanced web services to Java solutions and to unmanaged code like the, the C, Access to C project, which is driving the PHP. So the breadth of this interoperability is really quite impressive. And it's really thanks to Microsoft's industry-leading support for the open standards around web services that really make this possible. Thank you very much for your time.